We're here today to talk about how you safely shut down a solar system. We've got Joel with me here, A-grade electrician at Greenwood. Joel, do you mind just taking us through the basic steps of how you shut down a solar system? Cheers. Sure, no problem. So, as per uh, 5033, we will have our uh, labels on each inverter, which will show our shutdown procedure. What that's essentially saying is, and we can read through it, turn off the main switch, inverter supply, or AC isolator. So we're going to knock off the AC supply first. Uh, I'll go into the reasons as to why we do that in a second. Uh, which we will find in this case is at our PVDB. Um, some places may have an AC isolator adjacent to the inverter, which, which could be used in that scenario. So we'll go over to our PVDB and we'll turn off our AC supply. Okay, our PVDB here. In this case, we have three inverters. We're going to take off each inverter one by one and then turn off the solar supply uh, main switch, the solar main switch, rather. If we refer back to our inverters, we can see that the lights on the front there have now gone red, indicating that we have no AC in this case. When doing those breakers, is there an order of which way you do them? Or does it, does it matter if you go right to left or left to right? Uh, in that situation, the, the three on the right, what we have in that PVDB, it doesn't matter which order I take those in. What we're trying to do is decrease the load on any switching that we're doing. So we're trying to bring it down in stages incrementally. A bit like when we're on, in this situation, we'll find our uh, heavy array DC isolator on this particular SunGrow model underneath this cover. So now for me, I can turn off that DC isolator. That's isolated this particular inverter. We need to move across to the other two to finish those off. That light will drop off shortly. Just move around here, sorry. Okay, so here we go, the one's already dropped off. This one will uh, discontinue in a second. So that second step is what we've done just now. Turn off the PV array DC isolator located at the inverter. Different models will have them in different configurations in different places. The reason why we turn off in this sequence is, is essentially, with the DC isolator, it's important to note that the DC isolators essentially have a finite number of cycles that they can do, particularly because they're breaking a DC current, mm -hmm. you don't want to do that under load. Yep. So the reason why we drop off the AC first is that we're negating the current coming to this inverter. There'll still be voltage present, but it means that we can switch the DC without switching it under load, therefore not stressing the actual switch components. Yep. So less fatigue. Less fatigue, on your, yeah. On your yeah. component tree over yeah. time. So yep. bringing things down gently looks yep. after the equipment. Correct procedure. Yep. Yeah, correct procedure. Yep. So what's the easiest way to probably identify it? AC, then DC? AC, DC. Rock and roll, baby. Do it. Absolutely. I would, I would recommend, cool. if you can think of a way to shut down a, uh, an inverter, just think rock and roll. AC, DC, that's the correct way that we're going to shut down an inverter. The inverse applies when we're starting them up again. So we will turn on the DC first mm -hmm. and then move to our AC supply. Yep. And then generally it will take around 60 seconds for these to, to start up. So we've discovered how to safely shut down the solar system um, by doing the AC and then DC. Uh, Joel will now take us through the effective way to turn it back on. So if the system's off, what do you do and what are the steps? Cheers. Sure, the um, starting up the startup procedure is basically the opposite of your shutdown procedure. So we're gonna turn on our DC isolators first. After we've done that, we're gonna to move to our PVDB and turn on our AC isolators. So we're gonna bring on supply. One inverter. Two inverters. 
and three inverters. We'll give those around about 60 seconds to start up and we should see production happening at our inverters. So in that 60 seconds, what, what is it doing in terms of, like it takes that time to energise, but is it sending signals through to your strings and stuff like that that's within your solar system on the roof? Like, what's in that time? Is it the components within the inverter? So it's essentially, recalibrate? Uh, no, the inverters are given a chance to check everything, so they'll do internal checks, make sure that everything's happening correctly. Mm -hmm. It's also a requirement of regulations that it takes 60 seconds for that to start up. Yep. Just from a safety precaution to Absolutely. make sure. Absolutely. Yeah. If something didn't turn on, or some of them turned on and some of them didn't, i.e. we've got three inverters here and two turned on and one didn't, what could possibly be a reason that it didn't turn back on that we need to look for? As a layperson, we could check that the switching has been actually turned on. So mm -hmm. check your switches, visually check your switches. Um, Potentially, if these are hooked up to some sort of monitoring, someone could, uh, as a layperson, could then look at the monitoring. Uh, after that, we're starting to look at testing as to do we have voltage present? Um, is there a, a fault in this area, as it, at the inverters, at the PDB, or further out in the field? Mm -hmm. yep. So it'd be a bit of diagnosing after that. Yep, perfect.